Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. Now, as you can see, I have hot off the press the Lunar Eclipse chart that is happening March 25th, 2024 at 3.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am old school. I love pen. I love paper. Nothing beats this when it comes to learning for me and when it comes to um, sharing exactly a, a perfect visual representation of what it is that I'm seeing. And in today's video, again, we're going to be diving into the lunar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Libra. So hopefully this has made it a little bit more easier and digestible for you to follow along. I also have some tarot cards here, some candles lit, some oracle cards. You're going to see me shuffle from those a little later on in the video. So hopefully you are ready, you're cozy, you're comfortable, and you're ready to, to dive right in. So first things first, like I said in the very beginning of this video, we this full moon is happening in the sign of Libra. Now Libra naturally rules love, relationships, partnerships, and it connects us to aesthetic, right? Oftentimes with Libra energy, and especially looking at the entirety of this chart, we have to kind of look at um, our relationship with others or our relationship with other things and their relationship with us. Not only is this full moon highlighting the power of relationships and connection and intimacy, but are those relationships, are those connections, are they healthy? The opposite of Libra is Aries, and there's a lot of energy going on in Aries currently. Not only is the sun transiting through Aries, but we also have the North Node, Chiron, and Mercury. This is showing that a lot of our inner wounds and a lot of where it is that we are, the universe sees that we should be striving towards, where we should be going collectively as, as, a, as collective consciousness, and the way that our minds should be working and processing information it needs to be Aries, Aries inspired. There's going to be heavy Aries influence. Now, what does that look like? Aries is independent. It's fiery. It's fiery. It's courageous. It's a self starter, self initiator, and it's very much focuses on I am. Aries actually rules the statement, I am. And with Libra, it's interesting because Libra is the very opposite of that energy and connects to partnerships and relationships. Now, even though this full moon, the sun, right, in Aries is shining its light onto the moon directly opposite in Libra, we have to look at how our relationships or how we approach relationships, the relationships that we allow into our lives, especially when it comes to intimate partners and connections, right? Or even our marriage partner, how that has us feeling about ourselves. And if you are someone who is single or attracting relationships or attracting love or want something wants marriage because Libra naturally connects us to marriage and long-term relationships or lifetime bonds or long-term bonds, we have to see how do we think and feel about ourselves? What is it, the inner dialogue that we say to ourselves every day, the belief systems that we that we hold on to that shape the relate that shape our relationship to the world, that shape our relationship to others, that shape our relationship with our work, because they tend to kind of break, they, can, they tend to kind of flow into all those different categories. It doesn't just stay in one area. So with the North Node in the sign of Aries, again, ruling I am, this is a wonderful time. And with Mercury ruling how we process information, how we anal analyze information, what we say, what we think, which ultimately ends up being sometimes what, what it is that we do, um, we have to look at or we're fated to look at right now, how, what is, how are we defining ourselves right now? How do you view yourself to be? This is also a new season, right? This is the start of the new astrological year for us. This is a totally new chapter, a new season in every single one of our lives. And with this new season, it's so important for us to disconnect from those 
relationships, those things, those partnerships, not even with humans, like other people, but maybe your relationship with work, maybe your relationship with your health, how you take care of your body, your relationship with play, your ability to be creative. There are some parts of yourself that may have been stunted or blocked or disconnected or disoriented, especially through your own growth. We have to, we it's not just the this one chart or this one transit, I'm sorry. It's not just this one transit or this one aspect that is that I'm looking at. Although it's very important, it's the topic of today's video. It's important that we look at the the history, why we're here, and what had to happen in order to bring us to this space that it is that we're in right now. And with Pluto freshly out of Capricorn and now into Aquarius, and I hope you guys can see this, I'll zoom in just a little bit. Now that Pluto is outside of Capricorn and into the sign of Aquarius, there is a need now to hyper-focus on your individualism, your sense of freedom, and for those that have been in situations, toxic relationships, manipulative patterns, people that have been abusive or relationships that have not been um, positive or that have been very turbulent up and down. There might have been some control issues because that's a natural thing too that comes up with um, Pluto and the sign of Capricorn, especially when it comes to expectations. These are things that you've already broken free from. And now that Pluto has entered into the sign of Aquarius, the astrology charts now are really focusing on who are you without them? Who are you without this? Can you stand on your own two feet without these, um, uh, what, um, like foundation, these poles, right? These, these poles that are acting as, um, uh, foundation, like the foundation to you. What happens when those things are pulled away? And for us, not just in our intimate lives, but also in our government and politics and big business, we saw the crumbling of the very things that we thought, oh, this is a sure thing. This is going to last forever. But Pluto will zero in on the things that are toxic, the things that are, we don't even realize sometimes that could be addictions, that could be our fears that are inhibiting us and has been working over the years to dismantle them, to pull them up, to crush them. And then you are reborn with the area that the focus, the area of focus is your freedom, your expansion, your ability to do things differently for the sake of your future, for the sake of also humanity. Now, I know that sounds so wild, right? Because in your house, in your community, in your town, how could your relationship, right, or the dynamics within your relationship be so important that they impact humanity? Well, I think it was Mother Teresa who said, if you want to change the world, begin at home. And that is so true. Because we are fostering, right? Even in our small little bubbles, we either foster, we're either fostering healthy connections or we're kind of building upon unhealthy connections and unhealthy uh, patterns. And those people end up going out into the world. Those people end up crossing paths with us in, in our everyday. And if it's constantly negative people or people who have... Um, negative behavioral patterns and traits kind of bumping into each other, then it ends up rubbing off and the, uh, it just has this like butterfly effect. It, it, it spans out all across, all across the nation. So with the Libra full moon, and I hope you guys are following along with this, but with the Libra full moon, there is absolutely a connection to relationships, partnerships, but also within, outside of those relationships, who are you? And what does a healthy, happy relationship where you are thriving and independent and have your own identity, what does that look like? Now, for some of you guys that you don't know what that is, you don't know, you all you know is what it's like to be together, all you know is that this type of person exists, all you know is that this has been your experience thus far, this can be really tough and really challenging because how can you experience something or see, like, attract something or find something when you ultimately don't know what it is that you're looking for? This is one of those full moons where it's it's wonderful for you to ask the in the the universe your angels and your guides to prioritize your awareness your perspective especially when it comes to who and what you are choosing now of course with libra it's always a, it's a, there's always a nod to relationships um 
intimate and long-term love love relationships, partnerships, those types of things. However, because Libra is going to rule every one of your charts differently, you guys all have unique astrology charts. So this this um this chart, this moment is going to impact every single one of you guys in a way that is unique to your circumstances and a and a in a way that is unique to what makes you you. I don't limit myself and stay superficial by saying that this will only show up in relationships, marriage, because it could it, it could really break down in so many different areas. And if I would be even if I broke it down from your rising sign, I still would be doing you a disservice. This is if I was to narrow it in, it would have to be an exact chart reading. Right. So for the sake of today's video. Yes, love, relationships, connections, partnerships are important and get highlighted. That's something that is natural. It's obvious. You can manifest it. You can set intention for it. But for the sake of to, for today's video and being as specific as possible, I want you to look beyond just the relationships. I want to look. Want you to look beyond um, partnerships, connection, intimacy, and marriage, and look at how you identify, how you harmonize with everything around you. Or if that seems exhausted for you, then ask again. Ask your angels, your guides, your ancestors to show you the parts of yourselves where you may be over comp compensate compensating, over giving, over extending yourself, or underserving others, holding back love, holding back compassion, holding back forgiveness. So we need to find a little healthy balance. That's the other word too. Balance balance. Now, perfect balance is something that is not possible. And as someone who was born on the autumn equinox, who strives for perfect balance in everything that I do, this, the, I have learned that perfect balance is not that it's not that it's not attainable. It's just not realistic to have that as a goal long-term forever. It would be exhaustive and exhausting to try to maintain a sense of, uh, per perfect you know, the, the, you know, perfect balance in just every single area of my life or even one area of my life or yours. The goal is, though, is to be able to have to prioritize your, yourself, to prioritize your self-awareness, to prioritize awareness in general so that you can see when something is starting to get off kilter or when something feels off. Um, not only within others' energies towards you, but your energy towards yourself and in relation to all the different areas of your life. It, for example, I'm going to break down each one of the chunks of our lives as far as how this will apply in with the Libra, with the Libra uh, lunar eclipse, right? So when it comes to our relationships with ourselves, right? First, first, first and foremost, do we have a healthy do we have healthy self-image? When you look at yourself in the mirror, do you like what you see? When you hear yourself talk, do you like what you hear? When you see how the world reacts to you, right? When the world places its eyes on you, what's the reaction that the world gives to you? Now, those are things that we can't change, but when we sit with it, we can disconnect ourselves and make ourselves separate from the way that these things see us and view us. And it, it either A, does not become important anymore and does not dictate how how we live our lives, what we do with our lives, or we become the opposite of that, Aries, and become an advocate and we rally for change, right? It's all about where your energy wishes to flow, right? Where your energy feels like it makes sense for it to flow. Now, when it comes to the second house, the energy, how do, how is your relationship with money? How is your relationship with the things that is that you value? Do you feel like if you have this thing, then that gives you more self-worth? If you if you dress like this or if you do this, does somehow that make you a better person or less than? And on the flip side, that's not necessarily a bad thing. What if you've evolved so much that this Libra full moon, this Libra lunar eclipse says, let's strip ourselves of what we used to do, what we used to look like, and 
and begin to prioritize and invest in the things that reflect who we are now or what it is that we wish to achieve because there are some things that can be very helpful for us, like little physical things that could be helpful for us in our journey and our lives or some investments that is that we can make or we could prioritize our spending and our, and our resources. If you're someone who looks at money as a negative thing or money is the root of all evil, that is something too to kind of reflect upon, to look upon. Um, or if you feel like you're not getting enough, this is the time to begin to look at your relationship to accepting less than it is that you deserve and staying in a, in a, um, a space of wanting and needing and not being able to receive. The third, the third house is connected to communication and community. How do you feel in connection to the community? Do you feel bonded with people or are you an island all, all amongst yourselves? How does that, how does that resonate with you? Could you find yourself maybe exploring and partnering with new friendships? What is those friendships and those connections, even though that's more the 11th house, but what does your um, how how can you give to the community? How can you show up for others? How can you be of service? And also, what is the information that is that you are sharing? And again, this is eleventh and third here, but with social media um, and uh, like information sharing. Okay. Also, your neighbors. Do you like your neighbors? Do you vibe with your neighbors? You know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Fourth house is connected to home. Do you? Does your home reflect? your emotional needs, your emotional well-being? Is it a place that you can find comfort? Is it dirty? Is it dis disorganized? Is it stuffy? These are some areas that too, it can impact your energy, your, how you feel. And again, with Libra, the Libra full moon, this could be infusing your home with fresh flowers, fresh light, fresh air. All of those things would be really good for you. Or are you someone who stays so much in your bubble that you don't go into the third house and explore the community, explore the events that are around you, even if that means that you have to do it alone? You'd be surprised who it is that you can meet if you channel the Libra energy, mix, mingle, and be uh, open to friendship, connection, even if it's short, short, short term, short lived. When it comes to the fifth house energy, this has a lot to do with our relationship, well, our relationship with being creative and what we create. Do we see what we create as valuable? Are we able to have fun or is it all work and no play? That can't be good. Do you feel like if you, in order for you to achieve your goals, you have to grind, 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 grind? Or are you someone who spends so much time overindulging in the play and in the, the you know, spending so much time creating that nothing actually gets creative or you're playing so much that no work gets done? Sixth house is connected to our ability to balance our health and our day-to-day -day routine something I like to call hygiene. And this is also interesting too because we have the part of fortune directly on the seventh house. So I just want to say too that your day-to-day -day activities could actually bring you into if you're someone who's single right now or if you need to reflect on your relationships and how your partner and how you show up every single day, this is something else too um, that you can work on manifesting that if you, the side note by the way, I totally... Uh, switch gears here for a minute but if you're focusing on relationships and connections because we are talking about the sixth house but leading into it it's the um the dc the descendant leading into the seventh house this has a lot to do with relationships partnerships and who we end up being attracted to it's interesting to me that the part of fortune is just on the seventh line right there that to me is showing that there's um at least for the purposes of uh, today's video and what we're talking about today, um, with the lunar the lunar eclipse in Libra, a, a nod towards finding fated, having really good luck when it comes to finding your fated partner. So, um, and it's interesting too because I think that this could happen just you mixing and mingling, being around about in the neighborhood. It always it's sometimes it's kind of like unexpected, you know, you never you never know. This could also be connected to apps too for those of you guys that are on apps looking for love and relationships are open to it or this could also is a nod to word of mouth kind of hearing about somebody who's moving in the neighborhood or moving in close into your work environment and all of a sudden your ears kind of peak up, there might be some attraction, the conversation seems to be sparkling, so that's something else to look out for. I pretty much just cover the 6th and the 7th there, so I'm going to move on to the 8th has a lot to do with um, 
our relationship with death, our relationship with letting go of control, our relationship with our taxes, the money that it is that we owe others or that people owe us. Are we overextending ourselves? Are we tight and bound in the in some certain areas where it's time for us to completely let go, especially in the realms of forgiveness for the sake of growth and growing past pain, growing past discomfort? So that's a, that one right there. Right. Some of you guys might actually need to lean into expressing grief um, and being more comfortable in, instead of holding it tight. The emotion that is that you feel when things don't work out or when you're sad, when you're achy, when you're suffering, when you're struggling. Sometimes people hold on to that emotion real tight. And this is one of those times where it's time for you to express it. And even with this Libra, I'm sorry, even with this Leo, um, with the sign of Leo kind of falling on the eighth house from this chart, looking at this, this is a wonderful time too for you to lean into, especially with Libra, with art and what we create in aesthetics. Maybe you can express yourself, those difficult emotions through journaling, through create through the creation of your art, or maybe it's time for you to allow your art and what you've already created to be seen instead of holding on, holding on to it tightly, trying to control, you know, who and what sees it and allowing the world to see it as a whole. Okay, the other thing too that's really interesting, the ninth house in this chart um, is ruled by Libra and this has a lot to do with our religion, our ability to expand our minds beyond um, the normal constriction, constrictive thoughts that we think of our day to day, to think out like abstract, to think out there, to think into uh, terms of like how wise we can be when we sit with ourselves and we ask ourselves some deeper questions instead of quick Google searching and seeing what everyone else has said. This is the time to lean into your relationship with the divine, lean into your relationship with education, lean into your relationship and to explore through actual travel. Are there places that it is that you feel that you're being drawn to, even if it's just for like aesthetic, there's something about it that resonates with you. Go to those places, go see and discover. The next part that it is I'm looking at is the tenth house when it comes to your career. What is your what is your relation to work? What does that look like? Are there parts of your life, work life balance that need to be balanced out? Are there parts of your life that seem to be all consuming or parts of your of you that you know that you can make a bigger difference, but you may not be the skills might be for some for some of you guys, you might need to make a decision or you might be called to make a decision very quickly and in the near future. Let's say not, none of the jobs, let's say if you're someone who's looking for a job right now and nothing seems to be perfect or nothing seems to be in aligned, instead of lo looking for the long-term thing, the long-lasting thing, again, this is more about embracing and prioritizing your freedom, your ability to, for some of you guys, it could be like clock in, clock out, or for some of you guys, you have been so purpose-driven into hyper focused on changing the world and now all of a sudden you're just like you know what I don't want to change the world anymore I've been doing that my whole life and now I'm focusing on you know spending time with myself spending time with my family and zeroing in on this on the flip side some of you guys might have been in jobs that felt dull monotonous or maybe they lost their meaning and now you're finding new purpose and new meaning and that's what you're harm harm harmonizing with and aligning with now the 11th house we did talk about with relationships friendships specifically and also our relationship with social media the balance of that for everyone here it's different let's say you're spending too much time scrolling through tiktok and Instagram and that's what's killing your creativity or maybe you're comparing yourself to others that's something here that's time for you to let that go and allow yourself to branch out and really just do what is in your best interest and not worrying about what other people see and think and if they prioritize it and if they value your contributions and what it is that you've created the 12th house has a lot to do with our psyche and our deep secrets <laughs> I love the 12th house um so this is a wonderful time too to look at um, your inner, your inner voice, your inner, your inner beliefs. If there's any type of fears or s ways that you self sabotage, um, things that you feel imprisoned by, things that you feel you are a victim to, this is a time to work on again empowering yourself again, especially with the North Node in the sign of Aries. Even if you are found even if you are someone who feels constricted like your situations around you or things that you can't change the north node 
and Chiron and Mercury in Aries with our sun in Aries lighting up the energy of the full moon says that you can actually in this situation illuminate yourself and see beyond the current circumstances and and choose that instead of choosing to look at yourself as imprisoned or powerless this full moon is very powerful when it comes to being uh like can uh, what did I, I was going to say self-convicted, but that's not the right word. Like believing in yourself wholeheartedly and what you can do. For a lot of you guys, this is about breaking free of relationships and patterns, most specifically patterns that you may have been balancing for too long. You have, you may have over-compromised uh, over and overcompensated within and people have taken advantage of that. And instead of you waiting for permission for them to free you, you are choosing to free yourself from the circumstances and it looks like it's gonna be a great risk with Chiron here. It's the very part of you that says, I don't wanna branch out. I don't want to put myself out there. I don't wanna start over, but you have to learn. You're, you're learning to analyze that fear in starting over, that fear of being quote unquote alone or doing things, doing things for yourself by yourself. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be doomed to be isolated to be left out with the full moon in the sign of Libra this is going to again shine a light on the parts of you that may have you know um what's the word like kind of gone along with things for too long to the point where you may have you may feel powerless now not all of this is empowering <laughs> you could also use this new moon or I'm sorry, you could use this full moon for creative expan ex creative ex expansion, creative creative exploration, um, falling in love with life again, falling in love with love again. Also, self care, beauty, goddess energy, goddess vibes are very much big on this Libra full moon, and I kind of now want to break into the transits that are impacting this full moon not just the full moon itself. So the first thing that's standing out to me again is Pluto. Here, ruling death, destruction, transformation, sitting in the sign of Aquarius, which naturally connects us to freedom and um, adventure to some degree, detachment to another degree. It's our ability to disconnect and really... Um, <laughs> I love that these are two air signs too because they seem so dissociative. They seem so like head in the clouds and coming up with a conception like a, a a real conception like a real genuine this is what i see for myself this is what it is that i want i can now call it into existence right and a lot of this i have to say all of this detachment all the separation can be difficult for for some it's not just the the lunar eclipse that is triggering separation and disconnection from these things it is pluto newly in a sign of aquarius it is uranus transiting through taurus it's jupiter transiting through taurus and saturn transiting through the sign of pisces bringing a bringing a need for us to um, really take our intuition and our gut instinct and vibes into serious consideration and to trust that, right? That's going to be our biggest beacon. That's going to be our biggest, one of our, one of our many, um, places of light here, right? If there are places that you have found yourself kind of lost in someone else's fantasy or let's say, let's go bigger. Let's say this is when we start seeing how, I don't want to say like, well, now I'm going to go ahead and say it like government and businesses and politics, how they can lie or how they can try to paint a picture. But really what they're doing is not telling you the whole the whole truth. This is when you start to kind of cut right through it and say, you know what? I reject that. So even though it seems really uncomfortable as the people to be like, wow, I can't trust this or wow, we we could trust your word. Now, all of a sudden they're saying, well, my intuition was kind of telling me otherwise, and I should have maybe listened to it. Now that I know, are we, is it every man for themselves, right? It's more that you are empowered to see, to cut through the filter and to see something for what it is. And from that place, become empowered to do differently, to move differently. Now, if you stay in a place where you're hiding and you're 
you know, shaking in your boots because it's not what you expected it to be and you decide, well, well, who's going to tell me what to do? Well, what do I do now? Then, of course, you're going to be downtrodden. Like, of course, you're going to feel lost. Of course, you're going to feel like, what next? Like, what do I do next? But you can empower yourself and say, I'm glad that I see that. I'm glad that I know. I'm glad that I know that now. Now that I know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do differently. And that's a way to move in an empowered place with this with these transits and I'm talking about that globally because I'm I'm definitely seeing people awakening. I don't see like crazy revolt, although that will come in time further down the line. Um but it's more like people saying, "Wow, you were comfortable lying." <laughs> like you were comfortable kind of selling us a story and normally we we would believe it, but this seems too too out there that I can't believe this. Like think sorry, random, but like think about how for the longest time, you know, governments were telling people, you know, or the U.S. government was telling people, like, aliens don't exist, and it would just, or that's a conspiracy, like, this is a conspiracy, and then people are like, well, you know, sure, we, we'll believe that, um, but then now, all of a sudden, when they finally tell the truth, or when they have no choice but to tell the truth, we're not shocked, and those things that were a conspiracy actually became true, and we didn't lose our minds, we didn't lose... You know, if anything, we gained, we gained knowledge and we gained, I don't say trust, but maybe the ability to trust ourselves and to question things. We're empowered to question things. Same thing with the British gov- the British monarchy right, monarchy right now. Sometimes I feel like in England, and I have family there, so I listen to them talk about how much they respect um, the British kings and queens, current um, princes and princesses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And I say this with all due respect, but there's a lot of information and a lot of information, sh- like information sharing facts that don't seem to really add up. And a lot of people kind of accept it. These are those types of things that I'm seeing people kind of saying, well, no, that doesn't make any sense. And there's no way that I can believe that because I'm looking at it with my own eyes. This is one of those situations that, again, it's happening a larger, like in a larger picture, a greater picture, but we can also see this within our intimate lives. We don't need to go along with things for the sake of, okay, I always say yes to this, or okay, we always do it this way. You can then empower yourself and say, well, today is a different day and I'm doing things differently because I see and feel things differently, okay? So, yeah, Pluto here is totally changing the game when it comes to that (laughs) and this is something that although you can be reborn a toxic situation or toxic relationship does not have enough life to pull itself up out of the ashes if pluto and the full moon which is going to eclipse those energies and eclipse those things that don't serve us out completely out out of our lives now is this all doom and gloom no because there's a wonderful chance for healing connection intimacy if the if that which is there is healthy and right and in the eyes of the universe makes sense and they would like to see it continue because it's long term it sees it flourishing However, if it's not, that's the first thing that's going to come crashing down, especially with the fact that the same time that we have the lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Libra, we also have a nasty square. And I only say nasty because it's sharp and unavoidable between Uranus and the vertex point in the sign of Leo. So Uranus and Taurus vertex in Leo. So this is going to, and then we also have Chiron here. If there is a separation, if there is a revelation, it is going to be faded, undeniable, and something that you can't avoid. It's going to happen. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen regardless. This is the point for you to, again, then look at you not having shame or guilt into how you feel or you believe that you may have contributed to a split or some type of development that needed to happen and would happen regardless, right? If you are someone who takes on all of this drainage of toxic energy and you just say, well, I'll fix it, I'll make it better, this is because of me, when there's a lot of different factors, this is one of those things that the universe is going to say, we're going to split you away from that. That cannot be true all the time. And everybody needs to take accountability for their part and for the way that they reacted or the way that they contributed. It can't just be you absorbing 
right? Absorbing all of this energy. Can't it can't be that way. So, this is going to be again another an, another nod to new normal. And for some of you guys, this may actually be abundance. This may look like a large sum if you are like a large sum of money, it could be a large contract, it could be a large commission, it could be a large job that you take that is someone wants your expertise and your undivided attention and your artistry and your work or your voice, your opinion. Either way, it looks good. It doesn't have to be all doom and gloom, okay? We like to cover all of our bases here. So that's the full moon in a nutshell. If you are were concerned with... Um, manifesting with love relationships or manifesting then love and relationships I definitely see but also prioritizing your relationship with yourself definitely I'm also seeing that for some of you guys that have been pulled up by the root because of Uranus transiting through Taurus and the like the bomb that that's kind of been feeling like with Jupiter also transiting through Taurus this is a wonderful time to ground yourself, right? You can be very empathetic, but we also need to have boundaries with how you empathize with others and how you absorb other people's energies. We want to connect ourselves to the earth, connect ourselves to something that grounds us and stabilizes us, stabilizes us so that you're not overly you're able to discern again like the type of um the type of energies that you're picking up on, but what you need to do next, because not everything is going to be a yes, right? And then with Libra energy here, sometimes we say yes to too many things, um, especially for the sake of people pleasing. The other thing too is with Libra, we always want to look at attraction. What are we attracting? This is the time to set intention for, I only attract what is for my highest and greatest good. And when those things start, when that intention starts to manifest, that we don't get fearful and start saying like, holy, sh holy shit, everything is changing, right? You get to be empowered to choose what you are accepting, what you want to vibe with as this change is happening here. Speaking of change, speaking of manifestation, this is a wonderful time to for you to understand not so much the Libra aspect of this full moon, but the Aries aspect of this full moon, which is you reminding yourself that you are a powerful creator. You are a powerful co-creator. When you're listening to how the universe and all of this change is happening around you, let's say you're, okay, let me take a step back. If you are listening to or watching as all this change is happening around you and you don't like what it is that you see, you can set an intention, you can petition to your angels and your guides, the universe, your ancestors, and ask them to be, to co-create with you in this process so that you can feel that your voice, your your vision, your insights will be heard. If all of this change is happening around you and, and the, the lunar eclipse has a natural tendency to kind of strike things up quick, fast, and hard, right? You're watching this, you're aware of this, you can then say to the universe, well, if this is gonna come crashing down, then this is how I think that we should rebuild. And that is going to be you harmonizing with the higher self that is capable, that is inspired, that is an advocate, that is full of sparks and creative energy and ideas and is ready to innovate and build your life for the better. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's shuffle some oracle cards here and let's go ahead and see what they have to say. The energy for the lunar eclipse in Libra. Magic works through you. And tend to the small things. Tend to the small things. Interesting. This is giving the foundation. Looking at the foundation of relationships. Wow. Watch your words. Make sure that you're listening and you're hearing what other people are saying. That will tell you all that you need to hear and know about a person, about intentions. If someone is all talk and they are not able to follow through, this is not someone that you can trust. It's a small things too that might be adding up. It's a small thing too that can make a huge difference. We have white raven spirit, trust in the magic. And then we also have skunk spirit here, know your worth. And the skunk spirit is connected to balance. Magic works through you. 
That's that co-creation here. Watch your words definitely too with setting intention, how you set intention, what you're asking for. Wow, we have the judgment card here was the first card to jump out. Nine of Pentacles, the card of security, stability, and enjoying that. And the Knight of Cups, which is your ability to enjoy life, enjoy relationships, to have fun, to feel safe, to play, to be creative. Eight of Pentacles is the card of work. So some of you guys might be focusing on um, career for the full moon, inviting in more harmonious and, and uh, partnerships that work better for you. Collabs, maybe someone's collabing. We have um, doctor's visits, health. We also have structure and daily routine. That might be something too, like switching up how you show up every day in small ways. Finding a, a, um, a daily routine that is beneficial for you, right? That is realistic for you. And then, of course, we have Ten of Wands, which is the card of taking the burden, shouldering the burden, and carrying it. So for some of you guys, this may be you feeling like, wow, I really do need to do this for myself. I can't, not that you can't count on anyone, but this is a call from the universe for you to do this for yourself because they don't want you to wait any longer with someone, especially other energies that may be asking you to wait, 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 I'll get to it, I'll get to it eventually. This is where you take it upon yourself and say, no, we're going. No, I'm doing this now. No, this is important. Okay? So, I hope that this, oh goodness, and then we have the Ace of Wands at the very bottom talking about the spark, that new, that new spark, that new life, um, doing what you got to do, especially for some of you guys, it's with 10 to the small things, it's about closing out for some of you, it's closing out the smaller bits that are stopping you from being able to move forward, tying up loose ends, especially now that we're in a total new astrological year, right? All right, my loves. So please let me know down in the comments um, if this resonated with you, if this helped. Until then, please subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. If you need me for candles, for intention, for oils, you can find me at bahadilife.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, now known as X, Instagram, or TikTok at bahadilife. B is in boy, E H A T is in tiger, I L I F E. And um, until then, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.